We're now going to continue our coverage of the RX Java single class by looking at some more interesting examples. The examples we looked at before only motivated the synchronous capabilities, but now we're going to start talking about the asynchronous capabilities. As always, you can find the code that goes along with this at the link at the bottom of this slide, and I'll be walking through the code in detail here shortly. So this example is going to show how to apply various Rx Java features asynchronously before we looked at how to do it synchronously. And again, we're going to be using basic single operations, such as the ones that are listed here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can do this. So we're first going to look at a very, very interesting method called subscribe on. You'll see that there's subscribe on methods that are defined on singles, and there's also subscribe on methods that are defined on observables. Right now, we're talking only about the singles, but there's a subscribe on method that behaves very much the same way for observables as well. And what this method arranges to do is it arranges to run the subscribe, on subscribe, and request methods on some specified scheduler worker thread. And you can see here that the scheduler is provided as a parameter here. Let me move myself out of the way. So you can see that the parameter passed to subscribe on is indeed a scheduler. And this parameter indicates what thread to perform the operation on. And if you take a look, there's a, a scheduler interface and then there's a schedulers utility class that creates a bunch of different kinds of schedulers. And these can run in all kinds of different ways. It can run in the calling thread. It can run in a single background thread. It can run in a pool of yeah, compute oriented threads, it can run in a pool of IO threads, and so on and so forth. And you can actually define your own schedulers. You can even use the common fork join pool if you'd like. And what it returns is the single, it returns a single that's requesting the processing that's being done asynchronously. So you can basically chain this together and you can basically transform the single pipeline into an asynchronous single pipeline that runs the computations in the background. Now, the semantics of subscribe on are a little bit unusual and they're they're surprising at first and it takes a while to wrap your head around what they do. So let me see if I can explain it. So what happens when you use subscribe on is it goes ahead and basically starts from wherever the origin or the, the source of the data comes from. So, for example, in this little pipeline I'm showing you here, we say single dot from callable. That's where things start. That's where we get the, the fraction that we're going to be working on. We're going to be reducing. And whenever you have subscribe on somewhere in that chain, wherever you place it in the chain, it doesn't matter if it comes next or if it comes later, what it says is starting at the origin where the data comes from, where it's being published, then go ahead and run all the subsequent computations um, to run all those computations in that that thread context and in this particular case that means that everything we see here starting it from callable up to ignore element will all be run in a single background thread and as long as there's no other calls to something called observe on it says publish on but it should, it should say observe on um, then everything will run in that thread now if there are some observe ons that occur in that chain then things will be a little different. We'll talk more about observe on when we get further along. Let's ignore that for now. Uh, so what this basically says is all the processing is going to take place in this background thread. And it doesn't really matter whether subscribe on appears right after from callable or after map or after do success. As long as it appears somewhere there, it'll run in the background thread. And so placement doesn't matter, but it needs to come after whatever it is you're trying to actually have run in the background. There's also a subscribe on method in Project Reactor called uh, in the, the mono class that basically works the same. So Project Reactor and RxJava have the same semantics for their subscribe on methods. There's also a method here that we're going to talk about called blocking get. And blocking get will block the current single until it either succeeds or it fails. So it basically is a way, it's kind of like join, if you think about join, it, it's a way of saying, don't go any further until I get a result, please. So it's a blocking operation. And if something goes uh, awry, then it wraps that into a runtime exception and that gets thrown. 
So that's the marble diagram to illustrate blocking get. There's a, uh, a very similar, though not identical method in Project Reactor called blocking optional, which is part of the mono class. And it's, it's somewhat similar, but what that says is if it doesn't give a result right away, um, then it will go ahead and return empty. So we'll, we'll talk about that in another context if we have time to talk about Project Reactor. Another method that's important in this example is schedulers.single. So schedulers, as I mentioned before, is a utility class and it's got a bunch of factory methods on it. And one of those methods is called single. And what that does is that returns a single threaded executor service based worker thread that will run concurrently with respect to the caller. So there's only one thread, but if you use the scheduler single, the single threaded scheduler, it'll run it in the background thread. And this is typically optimized for low latency one-off executions. So if you just want to not run things on the, on the calling thread, you can use the single thread that comes back from single in order to do that. And the way it's implemented under the hood, it's implemented using something called a daemon thread. And a daemon thread is a special kind of Java thread that won't prevent the app from exiting even if the work is not finished. So if there's only daemon threads left when the main thread exits or when the final non-daemon thread in a process exits, then all the daemon threads will be terminated as well. So it's really just used as a convenience way to have this single background thread to run and it doesn't cause the program to, to hang if there are no other threads that are non-daemon threads left. Project Reactor has something called schedulers.single that works exactly the same way. So once again, Project Reactor and RxJava are very similar in this regard. So we're now gonna go ahead and take a look at the examples that are shown here in this particular piece of code. And this is going to give us a better sense of how to run things asynchronously in the background.